Welcome, everyone. It's time for our final keynote of the day before we wrap up. I would like to introduce you to Mr. Pedro Pereira, Director, Innovation, Adoption and Communications, Global Catalyst, SAP. Born and graduated in Brazil with executive education in the United States from MIT Sloan, Singularity University and University of La Verna. Ms. Mr. Pedro is a high-tech executive and entrepreneur with successful track records as a corporate innovator and new business development leader investor and advisor for startups. He will be presenting on connecting the dots for a digital enterprise and emerging tech shaping the new normal of the enterprise. Over to you, Mr. Pedro. Thank you so much. I'm gonna start sharing my screen with all of you now and I hope this is gonna be a very exciting session where we're gonna to learn together uh, a lot of things that will help us be at our best in our organizations. All right. So my name is Pedro Pereira. As you heard, welcome to our session. Uh, this session will enable you to create an efficient and integrated digital organization. Over the past years, our job was to help executives to connect their operations with experience of customers and employees. We believe intelligence is the intersection enabling huge transformations. However, faster than we expected, we entered the decade of action. Now executives not only uh, are expected to produce profitability for the business, but also it's a must to build resilience and sustainability in business operations across all industries. But in face of a global pandemic, everything changed. In only eight weeks, we leaped five years in digital adoption. That creates challenges and opportunities, which I plan to address uh, in this presentation today. Well, if you are passionate about technology like me, you heard about how data was the new ground to grow. In fact, it's now clear that the power of data to advance any area of the business is a fact. For instance, agriculture. Take a simple concept of sensor technologies capturing health data from animals, or the right time for harvest tomatoes, or even capturing soil data to optimize crop production. Well, one of the oldest industries is now fully digitized. Um, data collected is used to train machine learning models, which works like a human baby. And here is my daughter, uh, welcome to my daughter here. It amazes me how she learns from only hearing, watching, and observing things, especially on her iPad. Machine learning is the same. With more data, the models get smarter, and the results are more intelligent applications and services offered outside to customers and employees, which enable them to be inspired. No wonder uh, why this is so big market. The total economic impact of machine learning have a significant three-year financial impact. We're talking about nearly $50 million. And the benefits are clear with very basic uh, use cases like process efficiency from invoice and expense automation. We're talking about around 13 million there. Uh, increased employee efficiency from reporting automation, about 10 million. And it's not only for financial returns. We also see reduced time to insights, which can reach 104 days and even less reporting time of 70,000 hours. So there is a huge impact behind that. Well, that's all great, but nothing compared to what is coming. Businesses have an existential threat coming from investors requiring integration of sustainability and social impact of an investment, consumers demanding sustainable products and services, uh, and when they don't get it, they simply walk away from the brand in frustration, and finally, employees who expect responsible employers. Uh, the main asset you may need uh, may not be interested in working uh, for you uh, anymore if you don't behave uh, responsibly in this new space. Uh, we see new players doing great. Uh, Endeavor is producing fresh 
food in the desert of Kuwait, and uh, they embraced technology to build vertical farms, not only providing fresh products to consumers, but doing it in the best way possible for the environment. And when it comes to carbon footprint, it starts with your ability to measure your emissions. If you cannot measure it, you cannot improve it. And I'm glad to say that at SAP, the initiative to help in climate is Climate 21, a powerful capability that helps you to assess information uh, on the CO2 footprint of your inputs and products, help you to evaluate operations based on benchmarks, and finally optimize operations and minimize CO2 footprint and improve the product portfolio. So it's technology coming together uh, with your business for a better outcome. It's a challenge indeed, but it's possible by looking at how you purchase raw materials, how you deal with energy activities in your business, also your direct uh, CO2 emissions, and also the outbound transportation that also generates. So all those areas are there to be addressed in order to make your business to be compliant. And organizations like Dollar, uh, they have 108 years of existence and they are committed to climate action, working hard on the reduction of its carbon footprint, making us confident of a better future. So it is possible. Now I want to shift gears and look with you what successful organizations in KSA like Saudi Ramco, uh, Almarai, Saudi Electricity Company, what do they have in common? Well, they all embraced an intelligent enterprise strategy. An intelligent enterprise strategy bring experience management to the core of your operations, to understand the sentiments of your customers, employees, and also products and brands across all touch points. Build intelligence end-to-end -end with processes across all functions of your organization. And also leveraging business technology platform capabilities to manage data with analytics and agile development using intelligent technologies like artificial intelligence, blockchain, and the Internet of Things to ensure business runs at its best. So my objective today is to share some experiences we learned uh, from customers around the world in three different areas is starting from companies that are doing uh, uh, what they are doing to stay connected with customers and employees. Well, we see a real need for speed, not like the movies, as you have heard. We see a need for speed to bring businesses online. This is what we hear the most these days. And this example makes me so glad because I love pizza. I'm sure you watching me might, might like pizza as well. We're talking about cases that is really moving fast to stay relevant. And here, the situation is that people traveled less during the pandemic. So gas sales plummet. As more people uh, ate at home, cases, pizzas, sales skyrocketed, as you can imagine. And they asked SAP to help improve the customer's shopping experience. Customers loves uh, Casey's new and improved app they have created. Uh, not that they uh, know that they were doing, they know that what they are doing now and they have an impact uh, coming from it. So they truly understand their customers. And the customers, at the end, what they want, they want an easy to shop experience. Similarly, we see different cases like Valora who are revolutionizing shopping experience with a cashless and customer-friendly convenience store, they can help customers to shop without cash around the clock. And Valora, the company, has everything under control. So not only an online experience, but a physical experience that is completely digital and prepared for situations like what we are having today. Now, moving forward, uh, let's learn about how to respond and how to ensure business is resilient in this new normal. And that's the second stop of our conversation today.
Here, I feel amazed by the power of the business networks. Uh, customers, they have experienced broken supply chains, as you can imagine. And one SAP customer in the US that is building a new hospital, they were able to find a supplier with 500 hospital beds in less than 30 minutes using the SAP Ariba Discovery. Customers are telling us that their online channels are getting overloaded. Here, an intelligent ticketing solution are helping them to get the right teams to work on the right tickets automatically using artificial intelligence, text analysis to understand that message and drive that message to the right team. Not only that, in customer services, there is a much further opportunity for automation. We've been uh, working with customers that are using technologies like chatbots that help to take off the workload from our customer facing agents. And what you see in front of you now is the case of Group Mutual that is responding to customers 24 by seven. This is a revolution from 400 agents versus 100 agents that's now employed and one bot that handle the information automatically. Not only that, remote working is key at this point in time and enabling executives with decision-making is a top priority. Using SAP Cobot, a Copilot, sorry, a conversational system that works like Alexa or Siri, but with enterprise data for quicker decision-making. In legal, AI is a game changer to keep track of legal chains and access their relevance. Here, there is an intelligent app that is used for automated collection and assessment of legal documents as you operate in different countries in the world with different legislation that are changing overnight. You can reduce the effort for monitoring and checking legal chains and applying those chains automatically. This is a revolution in legal cases embedded directly to your business processes. And also with integrated business planning, you are able to sense expectations and signals in the demand from the past, the present, and also predictions of what will customers need uh, or demand from our consumers. It's a one single view that identifies bottlenecks and risks of potential change that will have an impact to the business. Finally, we have robotic process automation, the ability to automate repetitive tasks using trained bots that can operate systems just like humans. Here you have a request of a laptop just by using a chatbot that takes into consideration a picture and goes directly to the procurement system that is trained to make that purchase automatically without any human intervention. What we see behind those capabilities is a concept of a swarm intelligence. Uh, the collective behavior of decentralized, self-organized systems that could be either natural or artificial, helping the organizations to be more agile and respond to situations even faster. Which brings us to our last topic, which is purpose. Apply these intelligence and capabilities for the greater good. And I'm glad to share with you now, going back to the intelligent enterprise strategy, that the last ingredient that's missing here is the ingredient of sustainability management, which is embedding sustainability in business processes to create what we call a sustainable advantage. Your competition is not anymore the problem. Your problem is to have a positive impact in the planet. And that require you to go ahead and build sustainable advantages. Needless to say, this is a top on the agenda of CEOs. Earth is calling for action and the countdown already started, being it because of regulatory issues, CSR, there is a need right now for executives to take action. And by the way, if you are leading an organization, you will be known in this decade, not by how much profit you brought to your organization, but what is the positive impact you created with your leadership position? We are learning that from customers, right? Big brands like Ferrero that are 
doing uh, efforts to implement its ambitions for sustainable agricultural supply chains. And they launched the Ferrero Farming Values, which is a program uh, that is key for raw ingredients under the FX framework. So they are positioning themselves because there is pressure for trade of those products. And also the consumers expect more from Ferrero and their products. We also see product progress in product tracing. Here is Bumblebee Foods uh, and SAP who created a blockchain that track fresh fish from ocean to table. It's a network that helps consumers to understand in every step of the supply chain how these uh, fish that they want to consume, how they've been handled, who've been handling them, and if this is something that complies with their own expectations from the food that they are consuming here. And we are glad to see that there are new solutions that are being created to scale the impact like green token uh, from SAP. An innovation that is bringing raw material traceability to plastics, agriculture, and metals. And based on this high level confidence, I'm glad to introduce SAP Cares, our climate action and response initiative to help customers to change climate change. It's an engagement model where you can schedule a workshop. It's an executive program so you can join a masterclass and educate yourself and, and your team. And finally, it's a community of action where you can subscribe for more sustainable tech insights. Here, we are calling for action for you to fight for the planet and safeguard the company's future. So take action today. Now, in summary, we entered the decade of action with practical capabilities to stay connected like never before, respond to challenging times with resilience and intelligence, and with purpose for your brand, for the people, and for the overall operations. This makes us uh, enter the decade of action with a focus on resilience for the business, on the sustainability of the business, which helps us to achieve the so expected profitability in the business. This is all connected for the new normal going forward in this decade of action. I thank you very much for your time and I'm very happy to stay connected with you using the social media and you can reach out uh, so we can continue this conversation and I'm happy to get questions uh, from the audience if you have any for me. Back to you, Tim. Wonderful, thank you, Mr. Pedro, for that lovely and awesome presentation. Uh, if, if, if at all, I would like to ask our attendees if they have any questions they would like to ask Mr. Pedro, please go ahead. Please, you can raise your hand or you can just type it in the chat and I'll direct the questions to Mr. Pedro. We'll give it about one minute. So in the meantime, I just want to know from the audience, uh, yes or no, very simple on the chat. Do you care about having sustainability in your business? Yes or no, do you care about climate action? I'm glad to see some of the people saying yes. And, uh, and, and that's a very, very, very good uh, signal. And uh, trust me, uh, the conversations we are having with our uh, customers right now, it's all driving under the same direction. They are not getting the fund that they need if they don't comply. They are not getting the products with enough demand if they don't comply. So it's not uh, only about uh, 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 you know, activists in the world that care about uh, climate. It's actually a business priority. So when we talk about the future of operations, which is the objective of this uh, um, this session, the objective of this event, this conference, you cannot 
ever think of the future of digital operations without embedding sustainability to everything we do. Great. Mr. Pedro, we have a question uh, from one of our attendees, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, he asked, what is the major difference between an SAP and an Oracle? Well, I think that requires another month of conversation because there are so many differences. And I believe that um, we are here for a purpose, right? Which is to improve people's lives uh, and also help organizations to run best. So run better and improve people's lives is what moves us. And the presentation that I just gave to you is where we are applying technology for that purpose. So we believe that we are company of purpose beyond anything. And the differentiation that comes to us comes from uh, helping our customers to be at their best, right? And, 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 and that takes not only technology. So you cannot think of companies as only the technology that they can provide, but also the people and the relationships you have with those companies. Because when you need the most, you know that you have uh, a company that is there for you. And that's what SAP strive to be. And that's why we live by values. We don't live by only uh, pressuring uh, uh, customers into situations that it's not sustainable. And I think the reason is, um, uh, uh, and what is behind what I'm saying is what you heard in my presentation. Am I trying to push you any product or am I trying to you uh, to help you be at your best uh, in your operations and your organization. So that's my personal view on the differences. I think they are great companies, but I would rather go with a company that is a purpose-driven company. I hope that answers your question, uh, Mohammed. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Mr. Pedro. Is there any, any other questions any attendee would like to ask? I feel very excited about this uh, session and I thank you very much, uh, the entire Virtual Confex for uh, inviting us. I believe this is a platform for communication that uh, we need to explore even further because uh, we are in a moment that the decisions we take now, they can determine uh, the future quality of life of ourselves and our kids. So uh, I would also be glad to continue this conversation with all of you. You have my social media handles uh, uh, in front of you right now. Connect with me on LinkedIn, on Instagram. Uh, I'm very active trying to share this uh, knowledge uh, with everybody. And if you want to schedule a workshop with SAP to explore further how you can build sustainable advantages, that's also something we can do with you. We don't have all the answers, but I think that together we can co-create the answers that you need in your business so you can differentiate for the next uh, decade and even century to go. Well, right. if no we more questions. Mr. Mohammed, uh, hi, Mr. Pedro. We have Mr. Mohammed Shahavi who has joined us. He would like to ask you a question. Yes, Mr. Mohammed, please go. Uh, thank you. Uh, my question uh, regarding Oracle or SAP, uh, all my experience in Oracle, uh, about uh, 15 years uh, in Oracle, uh, but now I'm going to another company. They are working SAP. Uh, Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, my question here, uh, it will be easy to me to be familiar with the SAP. Well, it's a great question. And I'm first of all, glad to see that uh, the transformation is happening in reality and, and companies are uh, really uh, bringing, you know, the best of the people. Uh, and that's the case with you. You're going to a new company and they actually need your best, right? And, and learning SAP and being connected to SAP ecosystem is the easiest thing uh, ever because everything that we do is based on community, right? And our community is one of the most active communities in the world, coming from the academia all the way to the practitioners. You will find people that are willing to help, people that are willing to uh, join uh, that journey with you. So working with SAP, and that's my personal experience, is not a thing that you do because of the job. It's a journey. It's a lifestyle. It's something that uh, you will always find innovations that are created that could be implemented under one single foundation. You know, 
what is very interesting about what you're going to experience with SAP is that there are not many products and solutions that SAP try to buy and try to bring and offer companies. It's a quite solid foundation uh, with S4 HANA and all the cloud solutions that are connected. So that strategy is crystal clear. And the key focus is experience. So if I give one um, advice to you, is that you become expert, not on SAP, you become an expert in the experience of your stakeholders, because that's what the technology from SAP will help you to achieve. I hope that helps you and that piece of advice makes you uh, a great leader in your field. Thank you. Wonderful. We have one last question, Mr. Pedro, uh, from one of our attendees. He asked, is there an SAP owned infrastructure within KSA? Absolutely. Uh, I think we were some of the first uh, vendors that have implemented uh, infrastructure uh, in the country. Uh, as, you, as you know, uh, the likes of Saudi Aramco, very large brands in the country, they, they rely on SAP and they run on SAP uh, and they count with us uh, in, in, a, in a daily basis for their mission critical applications. And that infrastructure for sure is something that is available. So if you want to know more about that in more details, uh, I will leave to you my email address and I, I'm sure there will be a lot of people that would be happy to uh, connect with you and also provide more details on your requirements. Great, wonderful. Thank you so much once again, Mr. Pedro, for joining us and uh, for that awesome presentation. A great pleasure. Here you go, guys. Let's go for a great day. Thank you so much. And if you are in this part of the world, have a great lunch. And thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate wonderful. that. And we are here to serve you. Wonderful, wonderful. And I would like to also thank all our attendees for joining us today. It was an absolute pleasure hosting all of you and, of course, our, all our other speakers that attended today. Uh, we look forward to delivering more successful events uh, with your support. And we'd also once again like to thank our gold sponsors, Oracle and SAP. Once again, thank you all for joining us and take care and be safe.